All right. Well, spoiler warning, uh, we had to reshoot this one, too. And the reason for that is because the audio was fucked. So, <laughs> hey, I'm GR. Welcome to Player Base. Today, we're going to talk about how to create a character in a group setting, which is to say to create a party, really. Now, this whole thing is really kind of focused on having a DM who has an idea that they want to present to you, but you could do it without a DM if you really wanted to. The reason for this, and it's real simple, is that many new players, and some people never grow out of this, tend to suffer from the McConaughey circumstance, as I like to call it, you know, which is kind of like yet a game, and players like, uh, you know, I think this would be a really great time for me to use my plus 13 battle axe. Uh, yeah, sir, this is a deciphering ancient languages skill check. Now, the reason for this is uh, twofold. One of them is that people very often, because of the way that the information is presented in the player's handbook, come up with like an attack or a weapon or a skill set that they build the entire character personality around. You know, like being really into bacon or vegan. And the other one, again, another McConaughey reference, is the fact that like, the whole character sheet is set up for, you can't have rookie numbers, those numbers gotta go up. And you can't really base a personality or a psyche or a whole like persona on like a plus four on something. Although people try. <laughs> and I'm sure if you've seen this video already, you've seen that in real life. Well, at the table, but that's real life too. So here is how it works. It's real simple. You, because I'm speaking to the dungeon master here, give the players a circumstance or a setting from the game that you're ready to run. So, for instance, when I did this, I told everybody at the table, and there were four people, that, yeah, there were four, you guys are all working for your uncle, who is engaged in processing a war against the devil, because their other uncle uh, was a little rash. And, you know, you're all captains and the army garrisons that you got. What I didn't explain to them until the next episode was that the uncle was Fingolfin and the other uncle was Feanor, and they were all, you know, the princes and the princesses of the Noldor. However, the reason I didn't is because of this next bit, which is you don't tell them that they're high elves or that everybody is a, you know, disgruntled arcanist or whatever it is. You just tell them what the actual circumstance of the dynamic is. So this is your uncle. He's got something for you to do, Fingolfin. And this is the thing. You guys got to cross the mountain pass. And then on the other side, you have to find a landing, some type of place for the building of an outpost. Uh, I'll let everyone who's familiar with the map of Beleriand figure out which one that was but the thing is that's important for the people who are not interested in play acting the Silmarillion and know there's at least four of you what you want to do is instead of having them be tied to the weapons or the powers or the idea of what they think a character will be you have them develop that character relationally to each other so you tell them, okay, your uncle's got you doing this. What do you think about that? What, do you f what would you be feeling about that? And then once they tell you what they think, what they feel, you ask them, what are you going to do now? And then when they tell you what you're going to do, or they're going to do, you have them tell you something about the other characters. How do you guys know each other? What's your relationship? And once they tell you their relationship, you tell them something about their relationship. So it goes like this. DM goes, here is the setup, social dynamic. What is your internal and then external reaction to that? Okay, so player, agency, and perspective. Then, what is your relationship to these other players? So you're asking for a player tie-in with other dynamics. And then, you go to one of those players that they just mentioned and you ask 
and before you ask them, you say to them that there's a certain dynamic between them. So then the, the DM comes in on the third tip and says, here's this dynamic. So like when I was running that, that campaign where they were all uh, nieces and nephews of Fingolfin, at the end of the session, they had told me enough about each other and who each character was that because, you know, Sumerian's got a lot of elves in it, Fingolfin had a lot of relations, it's really easy to find a bunch of cousins that pretty much easily mapped onto whatever it was that they were bringing to the table. And so at this point, at the next episode, the next session, the next week, maybe after the break for the smoke in the bathroom and the, and the pie, you have something to give them that directly ties into what is the story that you brought to the table. I pause there because it's like, look, if you're not the DM yet, you don't understand like why it's a different game and it's fun and it's cool. And I can explain that if you want it. But more importantly, if you're new to playing the game, you don't actually know what you're missing. And again, a pause, dramatic, because like, I like I don't want to tell you what to do, but like it's a role playing game, not a stats playing game. This isn't fantasy baseball. This is fantasy fantasy. And the ability to actually engage in a dynamic, real social interchange and have that be the source of the persona that you're running, which is how personas are developed. We only know each other and we only think of ourselves as we are mirrored or not mirrored in relation to other people. The whole mask of being a person is the lines of force in between you and other people. And so to have that mirrored in the game space makes it so much more real. And you will be getting stuff out of that that you can't get by making sure you have a place to put your plus 13 battle axe. So it takes the character sheet, which, you know, hopefully that video two videos ago made clear to you what it was and turns it from a series of different keys for different shaped locks into bits of information to tell you what this real person is and how they interact with other people. That's such a different game. It's such a different game. And if you've never done it, oh my gosh. And also, and this is, maybe I'm telling this for the DM more than anybody else, but now it actually has been a collaborative process where the players have been, without any preconception, you know, no class, no race, no names, I call that the Ryan Reinofsky method, which is a reference to Bioshock, which is a game that I've never played, but I figured, what the hell. That gives you a sense of real agency because instead of coming to the table with, you know, a set of, like, colors for your banner, which you can do later anyway, and it's not really the important part, even though it's the fun part to do on your own most of the time, at least we think it is, now you have something that you can really get into because it's real, because everyone else at the table had their character arise out of their relationship to your character. And your character arose in relationship to theirs. And then the dungeon master shows you where that goes in the rest of the story. So the story that they have, that they put all their work into, actually makes sense for your character because your character is integrally part of that story and that story is now much more real because it has real characters in it and that's a lot better than having some fucking meme joke name which is fun too but like I'm telling you like look I could be wrong uh, you know I would like to be wrong early and often but I don't think so this is easy it's fun try it let me know how it goes and you know the next video will be on the nine types of play because I love talking about D&D, &D, but we got other stuff to talk about. It's player base, not D&D &D base. But I'm GR, and that's everything. You can do that for like 15 minutes or a whole session, whatever you want to do. Um, got any questions? Put them in the comments. See you later.